So a while back, my friends came across a listing for a 1999 club car that they'd intended on purchasing for their business. It was listed for a really good price because it had been sitting for a long time and it needed new batteries. They had asked me if I'd be interested in helping them with the battery upgrade and I agreed to help. So they made the purchase and the project was underway. After we got the golf cart back to the shop, the first thing that we did was begin taking it apart. We wanted to see what we were working with, and I also wanted to take some measurements to see how much space we had available for the new batteries. On the bright side, there was definitely lots of space to work with, but it was obvious that this golf cart needed a little more than just new batteries. After taking some measurements, it was time to figure out what kind of batteries we wanted to use. Rather than taking the easy route, I thought it would be fun to try and make something completely custom. So I reached out to Battery Hookup and they once again were happy to help out and sponsor this video. I decided that I wanted to make a custom battery using the SPIM 08 HP lithium ion cells. We honestly didn't put much thought into how much capacity we wanted the new battery to have. We basically just decided it would be fun to try and fit as many cells as possible into the space we had available. We decided on 221 cells, resulting in a 13S 17P arrangement. It took a bit of trial and error to come up with an effective way to make the cell connections. I ended up finding this 3 8 inch aluminum square bar that fit perfectly between two cells. I cut the aluminum to 3 inches in length and drilled two quarter inch holes to align with the slots in the battery tabs. Thankfully, Metal Supermarkets was able to cut the square stock into 3 inch lengths for us. We purchased about 450 3 inch bars, which means we had to drill 900 holes. So it was time to fire up the drill presses and get these done. It's all over, put it in the bucket. Oh. oh yeah. Oh, wow, that's heavy. I wonder how much weight in bus bars we have. Probably like, I wonder how much weight in shavings we made. Yeah. After we were finished up with the bus bars, it was time to begin assembling the packs. Before doing this, it is important to ensure that all of your cells are properly balanced. The plan was to make six 2S packs and then one 1S pack. Those packs would then be connected together using 4 gauge welding cable, resulting in the 13S 17P configuration. Oh yeah. 99 battery. Very making. efficient. Alright, so we finally got all of the batteries roughly assembled and I've moved everything to my shop so that I can start working on housing the batteries inside of the golf cart. And I think I'm going to start by removing the rotting angle that's in here and then I'll make up some new supports to house the batteries. But before I do anything, I'm going to remove the rear section of the body so that I have some more space to work. So yeah, I'll start with that and then we'll go from there. Okay, so from this point on, I spent a lot of time cleaning up the frame, 
As you can see, it was in very rough shape. I removed all of the rotted aluminum angle and then used a wire wheel to remove all the battery acid and corrosion. Once that was done, I began to work on the floor. I started by making some cardboard templates and then cutting the floor out of aluminum. After the floor was finished, the golf cart was ready for the batteries, although I decided to make some changes before installing them. I began to worry about the possibility of galvanic corrosion. The cathode of these cells is made out of plated copper, and I didn't want to risk corrosion between the copper tabs and the aluminum bus bars. So I decided to apply an antioxidant paste between all of the copper to aluminum connections. So I'll show you guys how I'm applying the aux guard to all these connections. Basically what I'm doing is I'm one by one removing the aluminum bus bars that are in between all of the copper connections. And I'm applying a decent amount of OxGuard onto each side. What I do next is I brush it in with a wire brush. Make sure it's covering the entire surface. Do that to both sides. And then I put it back. So yeah, only about 500,000 more connections to go. <laughs> This was tedious and took a long time, but I really wanted to do this correctly and not take any risks. I also would have never stopped thinking about this if I didn't do it. I used an inch torque wrench to ensure that all the connections were nice and tight and to be sure that there wasn't any loose connections. Here's a better look at the finished batteries. I made up some thinner bus bars for the inside connections so that I had a fairly large air gap between the two cell groups. The two cell groups are separated with an empty battery case, and I put a piece of rubber in the middle. The other side is just solid all the way across, connecting the two cell groups. The last thing that I did was cover up the bus bars with these polyethylene sheets. Okay, so at this point I was ready to install the batteries, so I made up some brackets and fastened them into place. I could then make the series connections, and it was time to install the BMS. The BMS that I chose to use was this Energist Tiny BMS. It can handle loads of up to 60 amps continuous using the internal FETs and 750 amps using the external current sensor. You're probably wondering how much better the new batteries are in comparison to the old ones. The old batteries had a capacity of 178 amp hours, and the new ones have a total capacity of 136 amp hours. Although lead acid batteries typically have a depth of discharge of 50% or lower, and lithium ion have a depth of discharge of 80%. So the lead acid batteries actually had a usable capacity of 89 amp hours, and the lithium ion have a usable capacity of 109 amp hours. On top of that, the lead acid batteries were much heavier, the original batteries were close to 400 pounds total, while the new batteries weigh about 160 pounds. Also, I forgot to mention that we're using a 10 amp charger to charge the batteries. To end off the project, it was time to have some fun and then take the golf cart back to the greenhouse where it will live out the rest of its days. Oh no, the, the stuff! We dropped the stuff! Should I rally it? Ooh, here we go, big lump, big lump! Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, if old Rusty made it up this hill, hopefully the club car can make it up this hill. You ready? Woo! <laughs> I don't know about this. I might need to push you up the hill. <laughs> Dear, come on. It's gonna do it. It's gonna do it. There's no way with the old batteries this thing would have made it up that hill. Oh yeah, look at that.
All right, whenever you're ready. I know this probably looked like a fairly straightforward project on video, but this was actually a ton of work and I don't even know how many hours I put into this. Honestly, if I was to go back, I would probably build a smaller pack or replace the original batteries with new ones or buy a pre-made pack. You never know what battery hookups gonna have on their website. They always have some pretty cool stuff at really good prices. Also, I know that I skipped over quite a bit in this video, for example, the BMS wiring, but this video wasn't intended to be a tutorial. I'm just showcasing what I did for educational and entertainment purposes. The user manual for the BMS explains everything better than I ever could. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.